very much. Thank you, Representative. Mr. Speaker, it is uh, great. I, as a former governor, I, I know where my bread's buttered, and it's typically with the president and the speaker. So <laughs> got to pause and pay tribute to, uh, to the almighty Speaker of the House. It is uh, a joy to meet you and your wife and your lovely kids, and it's great to be in this beautiful building. I heard some people saying, well, we, gotta, we have some challenges on the, um, the new parts of this beautiful building. All I can tell you is go to Tallahassee and check out our capital. This is spectacularly beautiful. So <laughs> what I thought I would do is maybe in five minutes talk about some of the principles that, uh, uh, that allowed us to go about doing what we did. We're not here to brag. We're here to say that if you stick with something uh, and you're aspirational, that you can move the needle. And it's a lesson, I think, for a lot of people. You all deal with policy every day, but a lot of people are frustrated and think that government can't get its job done, whether it's at state capitals or in Washington. I think there's a growing cynicism about that. And um, I, I, I disagree with that. But it requires kind of a process that um, some of which will be you know, standard fare for you all. Uh, other, other parts of it may not. And then I'm going to ask Patricia Levesque, who's <coughs> the executive director of the Foundation for Excellence in Education, to go through a PowerPoint presentation. Unfortunately, it's behind you. So um, I think you may have a copy of it. But, uh, and then we'll, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, and we'd love to have a dialogue about um, how this might apply to Arizona. The four principles that I wanted to start with are that data matters, that any policy, whether it's education or anything else, in my opinion, you have to, um, it has to be driven by data, not by emotion, not necessarily by ideology. Principles matter a lot. But if you, don't, if you don't start with the premise that you're going to measure how things are and it's based on sound data, uh, you're not going to get uh, the desired result over the long haul. And so in Florida, we spent a ton of money building probably the best database for tracking education outcomes in the country. Um, people thought the argument against it is, of course, it's not money going into the classroom, uh, and therefore, you know, the focus ought to be on classroom education. But if you don't know what's going on in the classroom by measuring, uh, you're really not going to be able to develop the right strategy. So we invested up front a whole ton of money in our, in our um, data warehouse. And in essence, in Florida, you can track a child from pre-kindergarten or from pre-K all the way to graduate school. You can connect who their teachers were along the way. You could determine whether that teacher was alternatively certified or certified in the traditional way. Uh, and that data, and you can measure learning gains because we, uh, we started before No Child Left Behind um, testing grades three through 10. Um, and you can, you can do all sorts of things with that data to uh, develop sound policy. The second thing I would suggest to you is that measuring matters. If you don't measure, uh, you know, you don't really care, and if you don't measure, you're not going to get it done. Um, a lot of times in politics, measuring means that you actually have to be held accountable for the idea, right? And so, so some of us, uh, including myself occasionally, not in education, but you want to avoid having the stink of having to uh, defend whatever your views are, your policies are. But the, in truth, uh, data uh, matters, and measuring that data against some benchmark uh, is very, very important. The third thing I say is the bigger the, the cause, and I don't think there's a bigger cause than rising student achievement in, this, in any state, it, it should be the highest priority irrespective of one's ideology because I think it's, the, it's becoming clearer that a literate, educated student population will become the next generation of workers that will create high-wage jobs that we all can live better because of that there's a direct link in the long term on our economic development activities and learning. And so therefore, uh, if you're going to do, the bigger the thing is, you really have to look at this over the long haul. So you'll see this longitudinal, longitudinal data, some of which are results that happen after I left, but continue to show the progress. And so um, politics, like life, is really focused on immediate gratification. We live in the here and now too much, uh, but good policy needs to be long term. And I would just urge uh, to, um, to live by the words of Ben Franklin, which are little strokes fell great oaks. It's showing the determination to do the right thing over and over and over again, that the execution of whatever the policy is matters, and it needs to be looked at over the long haul. And doing the little things right 
with a big idea will yield a good result. And then I would finally say that what you'll see here uh, are a suite of reforms, that we created a toolkit, if you will. It wasn't one thing. There is no magic bullet to assure that more kids gain a year's worth of knowledge in a year's time and that a higher and higher percentage of children are, are reading or calculating math at um, whatever your expectations are, that it requires a comprehensive approach. And in doing so, I would suggest to you that the, the main means by which you do that is to play offense the whole time, that, you, that success is never final. The minute you get some kind of result, again, in the world we live in, it's, you kind of want to move on to the next thing. Okay, I've dealt with this food group. Now it's time to move on to the other food group. And we need, we, we need to learn in our country to multitask a little bit and add to the reforms to make them sustainable. And uh, I, I honestly sense that if you, if you stop, if you stop putting your foot on the, on the pedal, that atrophy sets in, and there's no such thing as neutral, that you end up going back pretty quick. And so if you're, you all are passionate about education, I would suggest to you that what happens is that the first success that you'll have will create an opportunity for another set of reforms, and that that then will create another opportunity, and that each time you have that opportunity, and as political uh, leaders, you'll know when, that, when to strike, when those opportunities exist, that you need to take advantage of it and make it, make it a sustainable thing. What I found in Florida was that there was huge resistance. Not everybody liked what we did. I'll be the first one to admit it. Even today, you know, people think that the, our FCAT, you know, which is our statewide test, is uh, caused acne, uh, all sorts of things. <laughs> You know, that we had to create a flu, epi you know, flu vaccine for it. It's, a, it's this horrible thing and that it's not fair and, you know, all sorts of attacks. But what I found was that um, as we showed success, the concerns kind of moved on to the next set of reforms. And if you're constantly moving forward, over time, begin, people begin to get a sense of pride that you've gone from the bottom of the pack to the middle of the pack or the middle of the pack to um, near or, or um, uh, number one in the nation. And so our, our successes have yielded um, support that used to be opposition, but only because we can, are constantly moving forward. It's not a one-time deal. And um, I don't know if you all have term limits here, but if you do, then you need to recruit the next set of your successors to have the same passion for education reform that you have, that Arizona becomes the place, um, the aspiration I think ought to be, that Arizona becomes the place that is... Uh, that is reforming constantly, irrespective of party, irrespective of ideology. And if you do that, great things can happen for your kids. So with that, I'm going to pass the baton off to Patricia to go through this, and then we'll open it up for some questions or comments, or you'll kick us out the door. Thank you.